Welcome back to LARPing.org. I've had the privilege to film Beekaline located up in Canada for the past several years, and I've now recorded a new LARP in Texas called Heinefall for the past two years. It's an immersive live action role play experience located in the beautiful rolling forest just outside Austin, Texas. It's in a purpose built medieval village that is normally home to the Sherwood Forest Renaissance Fair. But for this five day event, it's transformed into the mist of Heinefall, which has everything from creeks and bridges to a full blown castle. Medieval style buildings are scattered throughout the shared grounds, adding to this mystique during the five day event. It's big enough to be enjoyable, but also small enough not to kill you. I'm David Mays. I'm the camera guy behind the videos. So I get it, Withers, AKA Andrew Garfield, didn't show up on this video. But regardless, you gotta check out what I gotta say, because if you love LARP and you love role play, this event is likely for you. For those who have been to the Renaissance Fair, you're gonna realize it feels very different than going to the fair with medieval tents set up all over the place and fires going all over. It's really a sight. Now, other than the location, what makes Heinefall so special? Now, of course, you've got taverns serving up cider and beer and mead, and there's live music every night. But for me, Heinefall is special due to heavier role play potential. Find my baby! Where's the Where? 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 Which one? Yeah. Point us in a direction. No yeah. way, please! Please! Red. Yeah. Uh, you'll find yourself in character really as often as you want. Many choose to get deep into the politics of the game. I believe that we should not be at odds with him. It takes great bravery to come before a court and make a public apology. This was not taken lightly, and I do appreciate it. All is forgiven for you, sir. Spend time searching for clues and puzzles. You win this. Win this, babe. Oh, shit. You cannot win both, my friend. It's just a painting in the sky. Yeah, baby. Ornaments of the night. What are we? Yeah. The stars. Oh, you can't. The politics and puzzles and clues are all part of a constant storyline that's threaded throughout the game of Heinefall. Now this encourages players to get lost in their character in order to move the story forward. Lark Wildspore of Solus Caligo, and I receive this shard through loyalty and friendship. NPC characters even show up from time to time and they'll interact with you and give you clues to help. Now next year, they're gonna be adding Heinefall stewards who will follow the NPCs to ensure that the rumors that float around are actually grounded in official story. Now, it's funny because Nicholas and I also play a game called Boulder's Gate. You guys may be familiar with that. Uh, and, and literally, when you run into an, an NPC at Heinefall, that's what it feels like. You interact with them, you glean information from them best you can, and, and they'll tell you based on what you ask them. So if you don't ask the right questions, uh, you might not get the right answers or maybe just useless information. So always remember there's ultimately a story that the week is based on. So as a character, you've got full agency to ask whatever you want, but if you choose poorly, you may not get the information that you really need. Regardless, you'll still have a good time, but just be aware of the clues that you learn and from who you learn them. Now, unlike Beekaline, it's only a few hundred people rather than a few thousand. Now, while thousands are an amazing experience, this smaller group really does give you time to learn more about the intricacies of the game and get to know more of the players and spend more time enjoying rather than the fall into the where in the world am I syndrome. It's a much smaller area too, which makes it easier to get around. And being in the US, it's generally easier to travel to. Now, that said, Beekaline is what got me hooked, so many of us do both. So either way or both, you're in good hands. Now, Heinefall has a number of packages that make going to the event super easy. Maybe you are a do-it-yourself type person and you wanna take care of your own camping and food and logistics, or maybe you're looking for a more all-inclusive service. The Heinefall team can break down all the barriers and make it accessible to you. They really meet you where you are at. The nearly all-inclusive package takes care of things like transportation to the event, uh, general admission fees, membership in the guild, complete medieval camp setup, lodging, breakfast and dinner, exclusive combat training, an online community that is super welcoming and friendly, as well as a team to personally walk you through every step of preparation for the event. Okay, so now you know you could go. What is Heinefall? Now first, Heinefall has smaller events that happen throughout the year, so be sure to check the website so that you'll know what the calendar is. But what we're going to talk about today is what's called the Grand Gathering, and it's held every November. 
The event lands you in the middle of the woods, shaded by towering pine trees, an event where you can become your character in the medieval village with over a hundred medieval buildings, including a castle that you can actually stay in. There's taverns, medieval tents that you can stay in, live music on stages. It's an awesome location. Everyone is in character role-playing and making their way through this medieval fantasy realm for five days straight. When you're there, it's magical, and you really feel like you're being completely swept up in a medieval fantasy land. The buildings are completely brought to life by different groups in the game. There's even a player-supported tavern located at the heart of the mountain, where you can stroll up, grab a drink, and likely hear the latest political rumors of the day. You also can't talk about Hynafall and not mention the Lodge. That's the local monster hunting guild. These folks are off the chain on being super inviting to everyone who shows up. When you walk up their steps, you'll see huge spreads of delicious food and beef brisket wafting through the air. They're welcoming to all weary travelers. If you come back from an adventure and you're looking for your friends, they're probably at the lodge and they're probably eating something. And every year Hynafall grows, which means more people, which means more experiences, more camps, and more buildings inhabited by characters that bring this world to life. Speaking of characters, when you step foot into the medieval village, you'll be playing your own character the whole time. Like, think of your, your favorite fantasy novel or movie, Lord of the Rings, or Game of Thrones, or The Witcher. That's you. Except at Hynafall, there's not one main character. Everyone is part of the story, and is brought to life by the words and deeds of each and every character. Or don't. Like, that's also an option. If, if, if you want to just go and, and drink and have a good time and watch everybody else try to figure out where Arthur went, then go for it. No one's going to stop you. It's totally up to you. So play hard or play harder. Either way, it's a blast. Now, there are all kinds of characters in Hynafall, from humans to elves, dwarves, hobbits, fae of all kinds and shapes. The character creation process is simple, but you can get as complex as you want. Like, I've talked to some, and they've got, like, massive backstories, and, and that actually dictates how they play the game, how they respond to quests, all that kind of stuff. And then there's others, they're just happy to have a name that matches their character. All week long as you explore the world, you'll be your character as you fight in battles, drink meat at the tavern, or, or interact with other guilds in needed political negotiations. Now, while filming interactions at Hynafall, I think that was one of the biggest things I noticed was just how often people stayed in character. Like, it's not required, it was a ton of fun to watch. However, don't let that overwhelm you. Most of the people at Hynafall are literally just themselves with a character name. You don't have to know anything. You know, you can just come, yeah. have a name, and yeah, play. So it's really beginner friendly. Uh, I think half, more than half of the people have never LARPed before they came here. That's really, really cool. Like never LARPed anywhere. Anywhere. The best part about the event is how you get to explore and let the world shape your interests instead of arriving needing to feel like you've got to have the whole world figured out. Each year you come back, your character story kind of tends to deepen, and the online Discord server that uh, Hynafall runs throughout the year really helps to do that. Now, unlike a Renaissance festival, there are no muggles present, okay? Everyone remains in costume for the entire full duration of the event. So once it starts, everyone is required to stay in medieval clothing the entire time. So like there are no in-game and out-of-game areas. You're playing the whole time. Now, this is why Sherwood Forest looks and feels so different than when it's acting as a Renaissance festival. Like, everyone remains in character, at least visually. Now, that said, you can still have downtime, and don't let that worry you. Like, it, it, you can still walk the streets and go and shower or eat without fearing for your character's life. Now, the team at Hynafall really goes to great lengths to make this medieval village to be as immersive and decorum as possible. But ultimately a lot depends on the players helping to pitch in and keep it that way. Now that includes no electronics, which means no phones, cameras, not even watches, and even topics of conversation. So like during the event, all modern topics like real world politics, real world religion, and other similar topics, they're all left at the door. Rinfest. There's still so much that is modern mixed into that, and this is such a separation of the modern to the to the lifestyle. Um, and I think it's a really fun way to kind of combine those things and live that life in a deeper way. Now, this may be a little jarring if you've never done it, but trust me, by the second day, 
you're going to feel as though there is a massive weight that has been lifted from you. Just embrace it and give yourself a mental break from like that constant distraction that we've really grown so used to. Before you realize it, you may find yourself dancing the night away or going on quests or making deals and trades into the wee hours and forgetting all about the real world. And that's kind of the point, right? Now, let's talk about role play. The R in LARP, okay? For many, it's the scary part of LARP. Now, it can seem overwhelming. Like, it's a five-day event. Like, how in the hell can you make stuff up that fits your character and matches the story for that long? Improvisation isn't for everyone, and that's okay. Like, if you want to do a lot of role play, then prepare ahead of time, go through the Discord channel, get as much learning as you can about the world and your history and all that before the event. It will go a long way to help. The beautiful thing though is everyone else is doing the same thing and it's really not a big deal if your speech or whatever you're trying to do completely goes off the rails. Like some of the best moments I have seen is when a character had a great train of thought going, it was all going really well, and then they kind of ran out of juice and kind of everybody re realized it and somebody would come in and save it and everybody just kept on going. It, it's a ton of fun and as long as you don't take yourself too seriously, it's a great way to really push yourself in a safe and fun way. And again, none of that's required, but I love seeing those who actually go for it. It's truly impressive to watch. Even if you do want a lot of role play, rest assured there's plenty of downtime where people will be, well, people, like talking, sharing stories, telling jokes and laughing, and just becoming good friends. Some of my closest friends came from this crazy thing that we do in the woods. A very common situation is for a group of people to be talking normally about life, saying whatever, and then and then someone's going to say, hey, did you hear what the Empress did? And then everybody snaps right back into character and starts talking about the world of Hinefall again. Then the conversation will drift back and forth, and next thing you know, you're kind of going in and out of character, but then maybe the bell tower rings, and everyone grabs their swords and takes off running for the castle. It's crazy because you just keep going back and forth, like from being your character to just being you, and it tends to get easier and easier the more you do it. So never feel like there's a pressure to stay in character, uh, it will probably just come naturally. I feel like everyone tends to stay in character uh, a lot here. IFGS was more of like single adventures and uh, revolving people around kind of like D&D &D style. And this is more of a complete immersive experience. Think of going to Hinefall like visiting a, a fantastic and very friendly country that you've never heard of, but you do speak their language. There's gonna be lots of stories and customs and practices that you know nothing about. So then once you get there, it's very natural just to start meeting people and asking a lot of questions. That's exactly what you do at Hinefall. It's fantastic. Next, let's cover quests. So many quests. During the event, there are a lot of different ways that you can find quests that will keep you busy exploring the world, meeting people, for hours. Now this is how players find clues such as the shards of the Excalibur that happened last year. Quest masters are embedded into the guilds and kingdoms and they'll give you a start to a quest. Kind of being voluntold into a storyline has been really special. Um, being part of a, a, a quest that I, it's kind of helped me, helped to bring me out of that fear of being a first time LARPer and helped me interact with people that I probably wouldn't have interacted with right off the bat. Otherwise, I probably would have stuck to the person that I came with like a little, like a little re like leech and been like, I don't really want to interact with all these people. And so it's been a great way for me to truly involve myself in the game in a way I don't think I would have otherwise. Even some of the merchants are NPCs that will gladly send you on an errand and you're rewarded with resource cards for helping them. Some quests are part of each guild story and they're to be done as a group. Now these can take years to finish. That's fascinating. We, uh, we made a last minute alliance with a a group of guilds that we had no interest in joining and we actually made a spreadsheet before this document or before this event saying like no 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 we're not gonna uh, do anything with them because their ideals don't line up with ours and then because of the actual game itself the in-character stuff like we created this avenue of like we should form an alliance with them and it's awesome man it's just like all this emergent gameplay stuff it's so fun now there's also a fully functioning player-led library with many of the secret scrolls holding much of the lore and information in the world that you can research. Finally, the team behind Hinefall is always innovating new ways to get players involved in both individual quests, such as like 
foraging ingredients for potions and alchemy recipes, stuff like that. All I'm saying is that here it works a little bit different. And each one of us within us has our own sort of magic that we need to bring with us. So it is not only something from the plants, these stones, but from your soul as well, and from the souls of everyone else who is here. You're not gonna get you, it. You're not gonna get it you wrong. You seem very nervous. <laughs> Don't worry. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> perfect. This is a good color. I think this is perfect. And I and want you to judge to, make, to get the color on the card. Well, I cannot judge until you tell me who this represents. Sorry, guys. Who, who is this in your mind? It is this thing. <laughs> Both. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, what what about this man makes you think of orange? Oh, he is. Well, he is vibrant. Ooh. His is personality. It, is it your personality? Hmm. Vibrant. What are you saying? Mm, perhaps. Well. Is he? Do you mean? Is he a little bit citrusy? A little bit fruit fruity? <laughs> <laughs> are you? I, I mean, mean I why not? Perhaps, why perhaps? not? Right. I mean, yes. I can see it. You can see the citrus, right? I can. And, and if he gives you the zest for your life, then I agree with you. Oh. I think this is a good book. Yes. I think this is well made. And I think that you should hold on to this to remind you of what he looks like. The fruitiness. Yeah, so, the fruitiness. <laughs> Trust me, you're not going to be bored. There is too much to do. There's also a fully functioning currency system. Look at these incredible minted coins used for in-game transactions and trading. These are real heavy coins that feel awesome jingling in your pouch. They have a real weight to them. The coins can be used for anything in the game. Some players use them to trade back and forth for everything from favors to hired armies. There's even a swap shack that sells jewelry and pelts and stuff like that. That's where these came from. And they accept Heinefall currency. Very cool. So the coins are part of a larger economy that actually fuels the game itself. So the land of Hynafal is shown on a huge map, divided up by hexes denoting different lands that can be owned and controlled. Each one of these lands can have different buildings constructed and controlled by either the player that owns the land or other players who will manage the resources required to upkeep the building on the land. And yes, even in your first year, you can own one of these buildings. We started out with nothing. So everything that we had to do this uh, grand gathering was uh, through battles, through political uh, gains. And uh, even with the uh, Carta Arcanum, the cards that uh, guilds receive, our guild once again got nothing because we didn't have any holdings. So we're having to make those things play to our strengths, which are the battles to help people in other guilds where that isn't their strength. Now, each one of these buildings, and therefore pieces of land, then produces resources that can be collected and placed into other buildings to create all different kinds of units to wage wars and secure new lands across the map. There are feards, which are like peasant militia, knights, mariners to row your ships, so much more. Then, guilds and kingdoms will use those units to do all kinds of military and political maneuvers on the map, known in the game as Carta Arcanum. There's even a bank known as the Three Crowns Counting House. It handles all the transactions, trades, land management, and action taken in the Carta Arcanum. Get this, all of these events that take place in the Carta Arcanum are eventually worked out, but only at physical events. So if two guilds are at war with each other, and one decides to invade the other, and their feared units and their knights, a process begins of defending and attacking that hex of land in the metagame. One side will eventually prevail over another. I just really love to fight on the battlefield. Um, there is nothing like the, the rush of getting a good hit, and there's nothing like the rush of your side pushing or getting pushed. It's adrenaline pumping. Did your side win? Yes. <laughs> we destroyed them. <laughs> but look, we were on the side of returning to a homeland. That's... It's a lot of passion to, there. A lot of passion. That's a lot sure. of passion. But it's not done in the metagame. The final outcome is always decided in a physical battle at an event. A lot of those battles happen at the Grand Gathering. Now these smaller battles are awesome and guilds and kingdoms take great lengths to ensure victory, bringing all their best fighters along with their best looking gear. 
coin comes back into play, as guilds can pay other guilds as fighters to help them in the battle. Or they can form alliances with other guilds to support each other, basically have each other's back. Uh, some guilds are, according to the Carta Arcanum, very blessed with their holdings, and they, you know, their economy is huge. They help us with that as long as we lend them our swords. So you never really know how things are going to unfold in a battle or even a skirmish. Plus, you get to fight right in the town. Now these battles are set up with objectives that require being in and around these medieval buildings, which really changes the feel of the town. Like, not far in the distance you may hear battle cries and war drums beating. It's very cool. That brings us to talk about the battles in general. So, big battles, a couple hundred people, which is pretty big. But, when you're packed into alleys and streets inside the village, it feels huge because you have to be very strategic with how you position yourself and take objectives and position your shield wall. Now, if you've never fought in a shield wall lined up against another shield wall, it's a feeling that's almost too hard to describe. It's intense. There's nine foot spears coming at you. Halbergs are ready to stab you from the sky and, and send you to your respawn point, which then breaks down your shield wall and then the enemy gets through. And the camaraderie built and adrenaline going through your body to not let your allies down, it's truly awesome. It may be the most fun that you can have with your clothes on. Now, that all sounds incredibly complicated, but the truth is that the combat is really simple and it's easy to do. The rules are simple. All weapons do one point of damage. Each part of your body has one hit point. Get hit in the leg, you lose the leg. You gotta go down on a knee, but you can still fight. Get hit in the hand or an arm, you no longer have that arm. So you can't fight with it anymore. Get hit in the torso or head, you're dead. Now, adding armor adds points of damage. So if you add padded clothing and light leather, that gives you one extra point. Hardened leather and chainmail gives you two points. And then finally, metal plate gives you three points. And you have to keep up with your own hit points. Like, that's your, that's your problem, okay? So when in doubt, just die. Don't be the dude that doesn't take his hits. Now that's it. That's all the rules to get started. And there's a way to get involved for nearly every ability level. So even if you've never done any kind of LARP combat, you'll be able to jump in, have fun taking down your enemies, or die, depending. <laughs> There's tons of nuance with the strategy surrounding the objectives, how you manage shield walls or skirmishing around the shield walls. Taking a group of archers to take down VIP targets and the other side's generals. We know what to do. We, we know the information and the objectives. That's gonna be my job. I'm not gonna be going out there being a hero and fighting a bunch. I'm gonna be trying to get people into the fun fight and the right fight that's gonna win us this battle. Now the generals, are yelling commands to their lieutenants. So you take out the organization, like it just goes on and on. It's all organized and it's all chaotic all at the same time. Every year, as more and more people get experienced, you start to see people rise to the top and become into really well-working units. It's really cool. All in all, the battles are a ton of fun and they get better and better every year. Let's talk about the story. The story of Hynafall is deep and complex, but it's also very easy to understand. So all of the lore is based very loosely on the story of King Arthur. Now in this retelling, Arthur ruled rather peacefully from Camelot, as the usual story goes. Except this version of Camelot wasn't a place that you could visit on the continent. It doesn't show up anywhere on the map. Instead, Camelot was in a mystical land separated from the continent by mist that would appear only at certain times. The place where Camelot was set was inside the mist in this very old place, Hynafall, which means ancient in Welsh. For a long time of peace, Arthur ruled from Camelot, traveling the continent using the mist that connected the whole place. That is until about 400 years ago, when all the nobles and armies of the continent were summoned to Hynafall by a desperate call from Arthur. They all entered the mist, but none returned. All were lost and with them, the magic that once inhabited the land. Life went on for hundreds of years until messengers in the form of animals brought word out of Hynafall again. The messages invited guilds and kingdoms to once again return to Hynafall, to restore it to its once beautiful and peaceful state, and to protect it from the encroaching darkness. Thus, empresses, kings, knights, peasants, and everyone in between were beckoned to return for the Grand Gathering where the fate of Hynafall and the known world 
would be decided. And this story and how it unfolds is woven through everything that players do at the event. The team behind Hynafall works crazy hard to weave that lore and background information into all the quests and battles and even the NPCs that occasionally appear in order to drive the story forward. In the future, Hynafall's lore and story will be accessible to everyone via a scroll system. Essentially, all information within the game, whether it's large or small, will be handed out in unique scrolls. Now these scrolls can then be verified at one of the in-game administrative buildings to verify the lore. And this should create a very interesting information and lore economy for players. I'm very excited to see how this shapes out in the future. Now, unlike other experiences where the story and the outcome are pretty much decided before the event even starts, like, Hynofall doesn't really function that way. Players are encouraged to help build the world. So part of the mystery of the lore uh, is the cataclysm and missing years that cause magic to dry up in the world. So each guild and kingdom is encouraged to help build that world, not only through their actions, but by contributing to the discovery of the mysteries that make up that lost time. We organize our own festivals. We run around and we betray each other and we form alliances and we have combat. And each one means something because we're all storytelling together. We have the frames of reference from the lady. And with that, when we're working within the parameters, we're building something so fun and so beautiful. And I just, I, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. It's, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be amazing. This has changed me on a fundamental level. I'm a new person. <laughs> then those mysteries are pulled into the present and affects the players in their day-to-day -day experiences of the event. That's pretty cool. So. Hopefully that gives you a, a good idea of the story and interactions between the players and narrative that drives the event. Now, let's move out of medieval back to modern and talk about the amenities of the event. The medieval village that is usually the home of the Sherwood Forest Renaissance Fair is equipped with a ton of modern facilities that make life very nice for the denizens of Hynafall. First up, toilets. While there are porta potties conveniently located all over the grounds, there are flushing toilets. They're known as flushies, and they're real toilets with real running water, sinks, mirrors, and let me tell you, it's glorious. Being used to Beekaline, where it's porta potties and a water spigot, it's a welcome sight. Second, there are showers with hot water, and they're free, and there's a ton of them. Like, there's almost never a line, and you'll have nearly endless hot water to keep you warm and clean. Trust me in saying they are fully functional, hot, and glorious. I can't tell you how good a really hot shower is after you've been adventuring all day, particularly in Texas. They're just amazing. Third, there's electricity. Not in the tents or the campground, but there are outlets all over the place to charge everything from a, a CPAP machine to maybe other devices that you might need for your tent, like LED lanterns or lights that you use in your, inside your tent, things like that. All of this really does make for a comfortable experience. Hynafall is a bit like a mullet haircut. Business by day, party by night. Now, after the questing and battles are done for the day, it's time to cut loose and have some fun. The nightlife at Hynafall is a ton of fun. The pub is serving up cold beer, wine, cider, and amazing local mead. There's live music every night to enjoy while you're sipping drinks and going over the day's victories or upsets. And also, this is when a lot of the negotiations and like shady corners start happening too. It's a ton of fun. Plus, the guilds are always putting on parties and they got get-togethers across the grounds. We've already talked about the Lodge and the Heart of the Mountain, both run by players. But also, there's some type of get-together, ceremony, bonfire, or gathering of some sort going on, always. Like, if you just walk around long enough, you're gonna find yourself swept up into something cool. Be advised, sometimes things can get spicy. Suddenly, out of the mist, there are monsters or other baddies that wander in the dark. Any touch! Any touch from a shade's blade is an instant death within the mist. So you got to kind of keep your eyes peeled as you go from place to place because you never know when a shade or some other strange creature is going to jump out and decide to come out of the mist. A medieval event like this wouldn't be complete without lots of shopping from amazing vendors. The vendors make up the heart of the village and are all conveniently located near one another. This past year, there were leather workers and sword makers and clothing vendors, several vendors of really cool accessories, and more and more vendors appear every year as the event grows. All right, so how can I go to this event? You've made it this far in the video, you've gotta be asking yourself, how in the world can I go to this? At Hynafall, there are two different categories of packages, the do-it-yourself 
and the done for you. The do it yourself. This is a general admission ticket to the event. You can get full access to each day of the event and all activities, as well as access to the restrooms and showers. You also receive access to the online community, including the Discord server, monthly Zoom calls from January to October, and a members-only website detailing logistics and a specialty shop that's coming soon. You'll then be responsible for getting yourself to the event, lodging during the event, either in modern or medieval camping areas, your own meals that you either bring or you buy from vendors. You have to manage joining a guild and your own camp setup, including where you camp. Now that ticket price is $4.97 at the time of this video. Then there's the done for you packages. Now these packages include the services of the Heinefall team to help your experience really run smoother and take down some of the barriers that might make things difficult for you. First, the experience package. Now it includes everything in the general admission ticket plus shared lodging in a high quality canvas medieval tent with two other people located in an immersive medieval camp located inside the fairgrounds. Now you'll have your own sleeping cot provided and set up inside the tent as well as fire pits, firewood, lanterns, benches, tables around your campsite. It's complete. The nearly all-inclusive package has nearly everything that you need except your wardrobe, weapons, and armor. And they'll also give you uh, discount codes from all the major online retailers. They'll also give you a packing list and a Zoom call to help you navigate even costuming purchases. Now you've got to get yourself to Austin, Texas, but if you're flying in, they can add on a shuttle service from the airport to the package, no problem. Being part of the online community is critical. By the time you arrive at Heinefall, you can already have virtual friends with all of your guild members, so you don't lose time during the gathering like meeting everybody. You already know them, and now you're just immersed in living in Heinefall. So definitely take advantage of the online um, Zoom resources as well as the Discord server. Now, I've stayed even with all my camera equipment in the medieval tents, and they are high quality and rugged. Uh, they are also time consuming to put up and manage. So having this done for you is a big deal. I have put up or taken down a lot of these tents over the years. So trust me, it's a convenient thing to show up and just have a tent. And lots of players really trick out their tents, making them look really decorum, even inside the tent. The camping cot is great as it keeps you off the ground in the tent, because remember medieval tents don't have floors. So separating yourself from the ground truly adds to comfort, particularly when it rains. Now breakfast and dinner is covered and this next year there will be more options to choose from. The guild tabards look fantastic. It's always great to see the tabards on the battlefield. It really creates a unified force among the guilds. The combat training is always solid and will teach you how to use your weapon and fight as a team. The Heinefall staff wants to ensure that you know what you're doing on the battlefield. While the rules are simple, they're also for your safety. So the point system is based on the honor system. You have to keep up with your own points, just like I said before. So if you get hit in the head and you have armor, you have to keep up with that hit point until you're dead. Even if you get away from that guy and somebody else hits you later, it still counts. Like you still only have so many points. Now we all get it wrong in the beginning, but you get better with time. So be gracious enough to take your hits and when in doubt, just die. Joining a guild is a big deal. Like it becomes your team, your, your family and your honor on the field. Like it's who you're willing to die for. Like I joined the March Wardens along with my son years ago at Beekaline. We have been loyal to the March ever since. Over time, I've been given capes and badges and other insignia with the March Warden symbols emblazoned on it. It's part of my character. It's kind of part of who I am when I step into Beekaline or Heinefall. Granted, at, at this point, I'm less able to play as a character because of filming, but my heart still lies with the March Wardens. You will find that same level of love and devotion to your guild as well. Become part of it, learn its lore, and in turn, you'll gain a family. If the nearly all-inclusive isn't enough, there are tons of upgrades to finish off the wants and wishes. You can add everything from bedding to clothing, even to armor. If you really just want to walk in and become someone else with nothing but the shirt on your back, they can pretty much make that happen. Pricing is very, very simple. During your interview for the trip, the Heinefall team will simply build you the package that you want based on your budget and based on your needs. If you just want the general admission, no problem, it's gonna be 497. Then, depending on what options that you want, the team will customize your package to create exactly what you're looking for. They even offer monthly payments, so it's not a big payment all at once. So, saying yes sooner than later is a big help. It's really that easy. So, what are you waiting for? 
head over to Heinefall.com and apply to go. Don't just take my word for it. Check out what these participants had to say about their experience. Love this place. Heinefall has become something so, 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 so special to me because here I get to be a champion and a hero. This is great. It's actually the only, Heinefall was the first LARP I'd ever been to. So I had no idea what I was getting into. And by the end, I couldn't wait to come back. And so it's just been a countdown and the, the guild members feel like family. And it's just, it's amazing. And, you know, this year I could add, I have a shop. Uh, there's a lot more just wandering merchants. There's a lot more people brought instruments. There's, it just feels more like everybody's a bit more of themselves. Like we've kind of figured out what we want to bring. Uh, it's amazing. Um, honestly, experiencing the fights, experiencing just the, the world, the fantasy world that, that's here is probably one of the, the most fun things ever. You actually get to be someone totally different and embody that person. And it's, it's uh, for anyone who loves role play, this is the perfect place to be. So now is the ideal time to get in on the ground level. And you can really make a place for yourself in this world you could you you, know, you can become royalty this early you can become a knight you can become a squire if that's what you want you know or you can become just a free spirit that dances through the woods in the dark so that's high fall i look forward to november every year because of it and i'm sure you will as well join us and become part of the high fall family also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you can be aware of additional videos that I'll be releasing from Heinefall, Beekling, and other events. Until next time. If I should fall for grace of God, well, oh, Dr. Cannon, leave me. For him, bear me the side. Where the angels will receive me. Let me go, boys. Let me go, boys. Yeah, let me go down in the bottom of the rivers are a tray. Was the crown land of our fathers It belongs to us and them Not to any of the others Let them go boys Let them go boys 